I was probably pretty happy to be honest because I felt like you know sport was getting really tough the wear and tear on the body um, the competition the expectation all those sorts of things I thought I wanted a, I loved the challenge but I wanted a new challenge and so for me there was once I started turning that page into the next part of my life and going to that transition there was a real excitement and um, for me I'd spent like I said since the age of four I was 28 24 years of following that black line and competing um, at an elite level um, those for 12 years on the, the national team was certainly for me there was a real excitement and um, it was invigorating just to think wow I can pursue these other passions now and I can challenge myself get out of my comfort zone again and pursue something so for me it was real excitement there wasn't a fear of stepping into the unknown because I, I wanted to step into there I wanted to, to, to get myself in, out of my comfort zone and pursue some other things so there was definitely no um, hesitation once the decision was made. It was like, hey, let's, let's go out there and do it. No, I mean, everyone throws around the fear of failure, but I'm not even worried about that because I feel like you, I'm, you just got to back yourself and you've got to back yourself to be able to do something else well. And I think for me, if I can, like I said, if I can take all those tools that I had through the, the success of swimming and and utilize those throughout my, my life um, in something else that I'm, I'm choosing to pursue, I certainly think, um, you know, you're not gonna die wondering. And that's, that's my sort of attitude. I'm not worried about failure. I, I look forward to, to trying to have success in those areas and, and trying to do the, the best, use those tools to the best of my ability and hopefully, you know, have some success in those areas. So for me, it's all about excitement and um, challenging myself and, and, and it's like probably being on the national team for the first time um, when I first got in there in December 96 in swimming. Um, it was just, it wasn't intimidating, it wasn't a concern, it wasn't, I wasn't worried about failure. It was more like, oh, where can we go? What can we do now? And I feel like I've got that, that youthfulness back, back in something else now. So for me, it's, it's that challenge and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be great. I, I had great management, um, uh, professional management that, you know, I sort of articulated to them what I, where I wanted to go and what I wanted to do and they helped put those, you know, I guess be the architect to put those sorts of things in place and, and help me make that transition. Um, very supportive family, extremely supportive wife um, who always backs me and believes in me, which is always nice to have people that uh, genuinely uh, do think that of you. So I, I guess I was surrounded by really good people that made it easy for me to, to move through um, that, that transitional phase and <clears throat> I believe I'm still going through it uh, but and, and allow me to um, yeah really really yeah back myself and, and to know that there was people around me that were supporting me in that respect just like they were in sport but in a different sense now so yeah th those things are very important. First of all, whilst I was doing sport, being proactive in that sense and knowing that there was going to be a career and you retire very young as an athlete, so you've got a whole lifetime ahead of you to pursue something else and success somewhere else and be a professional um, in whatever field you choose. So there's that, being proactive in sport. Then there's getting to the final stages where, hey, it's getting serious. I, I most likely will retire in the short term. It's not a long term thing anymore. So um, you start drawing on the people around you to help you know, how do I do this? How do I go about this? Um, pardon me, talking to people that um, have, have been through similar experiences and drawing on um, their skills and what they did. Um, because yeah, there is a little bit of concern there. What am I gonna do? What's gonna happen? Um, financially, what's gonna happen? Um, professionally, what's gonna happen? Um, and personally, what's gonna happen? So there's all these sort of, you know, balls that you're juggling um, in the interim and the leading up into that. So. Yeah, I just, just got to, to, to as many people as I could around me and, and drew on their experience and their help and their support and then the execution of it, actually going, hey, I'm stepping into a new world, I'm out of my comfort zone. It's definitely a spin out for a while because you, you're just downloading so much information when you go into new territory and it's a new challenge. So there's that and then there's just getting the comfort of, of getting to know a, a new space, new area and, and feeling settled and, and I'm probably just coming to that stage now. So. There's a few stages that you have to prepare yourself for and like I said, it's always that, that support network and those people that you can draw on around you and never be afraid to uh, put your hand up and ask for help because you're only human and you gotta make good and bad decisions and 
you've got to do some things not so well, uh, particularly to begin with when you're going through that transitional phase. So it's always, it's always drawing on um, people that you trust. Yeah, well, for me, I'm very, very fortunate to, to be involved with Westpac and finance, and in a uh, particular part there's private banks, so it's um, working with a great client base and building trust with them and uh, having success within those relationships. Um, Channel 9, the TV presenting, it's always just refining that skill and getting better at that and uh, more relaxed with that, more natural with that. So I guess, yeah, that they're my, my goals, and certainly for me, I've got a few other business things that I do outside of that as well, so it's all... Um, being smart and being proactive and um, looking for you know, opportunities there. So, yeah, it's all about just yeah, growing in those fields and, yeah, just, I guess, biting off bits that are digestible. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, that the passions for the other things I wanted to do outgrew the passion for sport. So, um, yeah, the void has, has definitely been filled. I will honestly say to every athlete, there'll be nothing like, whether it's going across the line or touching the wall, there'll be nothing that'll fill that because that is an unbelievable feeling and that is what every human being, would, I think, would love to experience is that, that uh, euphoric and that, that, that ecstasy of, of, of winning at that level. I don't think you can get that, that instant feeling. You can't replace that, but you certainly can replace the, the confidence of probably being an athlete and being successful there with you know, going into other fields. And I definitely think the challenge of, of sport, I've been able to, um, to fill that void in, in somewhere else. And I think that's probably the most important element. But you've got to be realistic. There's nothing that's going to be that feeling again of trying to win a, you know, winning Olympic Games or something of that magnitude. But there are definitely, um, yeah, the, the, the void's definitely feel, feels like it's been uh, definitely filled for me.